Vibrant and delicious purple sweet potato mash is a quick and easy recipe that makes the perfect side dish for your next meal. It's super easy and I'll teach you how, so stick around. Aloha my kako, my name is Rel and welcome to my kitchen where I like to share all my favorite Hawaiian and local recipes. And today we'll be making potato mash, but not just any old potato mash, sweet potato mash. And if you've been to Hawaii, you see these purple sweet potatoes all over. They're so yummy in Hawaiian. They're called uala. And it's a staple from way back in the day. Although not native to Hawaii, it definitely made a big part of the meals that the native Hawaiians ate. So first, we're gonna start by peeling them. Now, when you cut them open, they have this like dull purple hue to it, but when you boil it, it becomes this vibrant purple color. And for the life of me, I don't know where in the world I put my potato peeler, <laughs> uh, but we're just gonna wing it and we're gonna go ahead and cut it. Normally, you would peel it off. You don't have to peel off the um, skin if you want, if you don't want to before, but I like to take it off. Um, so we're gonna try this. Obviously, if you have a peeler, please peel it. So you're gonna take off the outside like this. If you're using a knife, try to cut as thinly as you can so you don't waste too much of that. And please be careful. Don't wanna cut your fingers. While I am peeling this, I have a pot of water starting to boil. It takes a little bit longer with these um, hot plates, so I figure I get that started. Once the water is boiling, then you can add the salt. If you add the salt before, it's fine. It's just salted water takes longer to boil than regular water. If you wait till it's boiling, then add the salt. It's a lot better. Do you have to salt it? No, you don't have to, but I would recommend it. If you're watching your salt intake, then okay, fine. So when you get most of it off, now you could Toss it in and boil it whole like that, but it just takes longer, so. Also, you could steam it if you want to. Use the instant pot, steam it that way. I was trying to look up what's the better way to cook it. Either way, when you cook any type of vegetable or anything, you lose some nutrients when you cook. So there's nothing, can't get away from that. And the, you know, the studies were not super clear on which one was the best. So, totally up to you. Steam, boil, they all work fine. Okay, so rough chopping, like half inch, one inch pieces. The smaller you make it, the quicker it'll boil. Try to keep them the same size, which obviously I didn't do a great job of. My first cut was a little bit smaller. But that'll help when they cook so they cook uniformly. And since the water has started to boil, we'll go ahead and add some salt. About a teaspoon for every liter. You don't need to measure, just kind of toss it in. Got a few more, cut this up. Alrighty. So when they're cut up, they look like this. They've got a little bit of white through it, but when you boil them, you'll see they turn completely purple. Now, if you can't find these, people call them Okinawan sweet potatoes, uh, Molokai sweet potatoes. There's all kinds of different names for them. They're the purple variety with the white skin on top of it. If you can't find this one, you totally can use the regular orange sweet potato, but these purple ones I think are so much better. All right, so it'll go into the pot and it'll boil for 10, 12, depends, maybe even 15 minutes pending. Try not to splash yourself. And we'll just let that go and you'll see the color of the water turn this deep, dark purple. And when they're fork tender, they'll be ready. So I'll be right back. All right, it's been like 10, 12 minutes and the potatoes are done boiling. So as you can see, the water turns like this deep, dark, vibrant purple. And you just go until, and I kind of went a little bit past because we were talking and setting things up, but as long as the potatoes are fork tender that you can poke it and try not to splash it on yourself because it could stain your white shirt, but they become this like 
You see how the white's gone and it's cooked all the way through. When you mash it through, you'll, then you'll really see that purple color. But anyway, so there's a lot of nutrients in this water. So up to you, you can save some of it and thin it out if you want. And I tend to do that if there's not enough liquid. So what I'll do is I'm gonna empty this out and we'll bring the potatoes and I'll show you how to mash it up. All right, so I've drained the water out and it looks like this. They're very soft. You don't even need to try very hard. It's still steaming. You wanna mash it while it's hot and I'll show you why. So you go ahead and put this in. There's a little bit of liquid and that's okay. I'm gonna put this off to the side. I totally started walking away before I finished my sentence, sorry. But anyway, so the potatoes are still hot and the reason you want it hot is because you're gonna add the butter. The butter will melt into it. If it's cold already, the potatoes, it won't melt and then you'll just have chunky butter and that's not good. So what I like to do is put the butter in first and actually you can kind of like, this one's been sitting at room temp for a bit, which actually helps, but you can chop it up a little bit into smaller pieces and then go ahead and put that in. And this makes it really rich and creamy. Then you get yourself a potato masher. So I have one like this. Tip here, I wouldn't recommend using like a hand mixer or anything like that. When you whisk it together, it makes it like pasty and this weird consistency. Like as much as this is more effort, I highly recommend doing it like this. If you have a potato ricer or something like that, you could try that. I don't have one of those, so we'll do this. So butter's in, just a pinch of salt. I like to mix that first and then add the next ingredient because the next ingredient might cool it down a little. So all you have to do is mash it. Let the kids help you, it's super easy. And you see how soft it is, like the, and this is plastic, right? But it's super simple. And if it gets stuck like this, then all you have to do is take the fork, a knife or whatever, and kind of scratch it off like that. Okay, now that this is a little bit mashed in, go ahead and scoop that down. You can add heavy cream. Now, if heavy cream is too rich and you're trying to keep this on the lighter, healthier side, you can use milk if you want, but heavy cream gives it that really creamy, rich, yummy goodness. So we'll go ahead and add that in. And put a little bit at a time. And just go ahead and mash it up. If you like it super smooth, you just keep mashing until it's smooth. And if you want it more lumpy and rustic, that's a good name, a <laughs> good word for it, <laughs> then you can stop. Depends, totally up to you. I tend to leave it a little more on the rustic side, a little more lumpy. I don't know, I just like it like that. But if you don't, like by all means, totally can uh, keep going. And then you'll just wanna make sure it's evenly incorporated. And you can add a little bit more of the heavy cream taste and add as you go. You can kind of judge by the color, the lighter the purple, sometimes the more rich it is because that means there's more cream and more butter in it. But this is kind of how I like mine, this little more rustic lumpy look. And if you love sweet potato mash and you need a perfect main dish to go with, check out this recipe here. And until next time, ahui ho!